Hi fam! This is an autism special. I'm going to start off with the story of my experience with surface dog, non-compliant of the law and autism because my surface dog is for autism so they do that. So the story starts. I was on the way to Rail in North Wales to, to, to go shopping. I do that quite often. Um, all went fine, bus was fine, going to Poundland, um, home parking and a few other shops was fine, but they all know the rules, they saw the thing and were like, okay, yep, that's fine. Then when I got into the main part of the White Rose Centre and I bought probably a pound or two pounds in the massage chairs, I've lost that money, never mind, this is the security guy or someone who worked in the White Rose Centre, came up to me and said, you're not allowed animals in here. I went, yes I am, she's a surface dog, so you must allow. All of the convers conversation and everything went with, us, with the security guard nicely. So, they were going back and forward, he wasn't listening, he was saying you need ID, you don't, you don't in the UK or in America. Don't need ID, you just need to show that he's a surface dog with a harness. And I do, every time. And you would have seen in some of my videos, and I do that every time. Even if I'm going downtown, I'm not sure if I'm gonna go into a few shops, then I put it on. But if I know I'm not going to a few shops, then I don't. It all depends on where I'm going. But I, it had on, and I'm saying, you must allow, you must allow, and he said, no, no, don't, it doesn't have ID. The one thing I could have done was stay there until the police came. and. I oh, said, sorry, I haven't done anything wrong. Sorry about that. I haven't done anything wrong. I took on my surface dog in a shop, minding my own business, and to George D. God say I'm breaking the law. Then they would have spoken and then he would have like that. Sorry. Then I left, frustrated. I went, I was just talking to myself because I was frustrated, like you are. And I was going on and on about it, but it took like, 10 minutes, so I called my mum, talked to her a bit about it. Um, went to the sea aquarium, but that was my plan anyway. Looked at the fish, that calmed me down a lot. That calmed me down hell of a lot. Because of the sensory part of it. Then I had some food there, then came home. Then we went to talk to the person in charge a couple of days later. To, to show the to, to show them things um, and to say this happened, can you try and saw it and everything? Um, so yeah, I haven't been to real with her since because lockdown happened and just haven't had time to go back yet. So yeah, I'm gonna try and do that soon to get over my tiny bit of fear that I've got. So yeah, and I'm um, in this video, I'm going to give some advice. If you've got a child with autism, the advice I'm going to give you is have routines. Because most children and adults with autism really like routine. And you must stick to it as much as you can. The way that I would do a routine um, is by writing it down, like they do in school, but do like, if you're going to do something and I'm going to take a couple of hours to do like a couple of hours instead of hours, um, write down breakfast this time to this time, teeth, bath this time to this time, going out somewhere this time to this time, lunch this time to this time, doing out we're doing this time to this time, coming home or doing something else this time to this time, um, tea this time to this time, Get ready for bed, they tend to this time, bed this time. So they know exactly what you're doing at what time. But if you go off the routine, just a tiny bit, then you could have a meltdown. And if they're having a meltdown and you're in your house, to tell them to go in their room and let them do what they need to do to calm down. Unless they're the type or children who hurt themselves when having a meltdown, then try and stop them hurting themselves by having sensory things. 
for them to use instead. So let's say a baby toy that they can bite on or something they can bite on if they bite. Let them bite on that. Be that could help. They're like throwing things, half soft thing for them to throw, like cushions. Or put something on your wall to make the throwing softer so it doesn't break. If they knock their head on the wall, put something on the wall to stop them hurting themselves when they do that. But if they shout and scream and everything, let them. A bubble tube really helps. It helped me until at one point when I did, did not turn it on in enough time. My fault. If I didn't don't, when I was to get angry, I would not chuck anything out of it and broke it. But I turned it on at the point where I would, at the point of throwing stuff. And I knew that. And it just mm, failed. And so on, it washing the stuff outside. So you might not be able to hear me for a minute. Don't bother doing it again. Oh, sorry about that. It's now getting uncomfy. <sighs> there. I think the person ain't gone enough now. So yeah, um, if you've got a spare room in your house, make a sensory room. So when you can tell they're going to flip or something, just put them in there and let them do what they need to do. Have a camera in there so you can watch them, obviously, just in case they do something really bad and they really get hurt. Then you can go in and stop it. But you don't have to be in the same room if you've got a camera. But if, you, if you don't have a camera, you would have to be in the same room with them. Depending on the age and how bad their meltdown get. Um, having a pet for them to, to help with. For me, Alice and the rabbit. Now and then, the rabbit makes me laugh. And when I'm having a bad moment, that's the best. That's when she jumps up and down and does the bum fluff thing. It's hilarious. So I'm going to let the rabbit out in a bit. So I'll film that. In this video, do to add a little bit of laughter in it. So yeah. Um, and another thing that could help is a weighted blanket. That could help when they're having a bad moment because it feels like a hug. If they don't like hug, that could feel like a hug for them. If they they got belly ache or something, put on it because when I'm on my period, that helps a lot. Be putting pressure on it. It helps me to remember, breathe, breathe. Don't get stressed. Don't tense up. Breathe. But it really does help. I'm shocked how much it helps. I haven't used it a lot this year, but I only just had it. It's summer, been too hot to use it. But I used it a few times, and it helped a lot. Seriously. A lot. A weighted blanket is a must. And if your child likes sensory stuff, find out if they like sensory to do with... If they like looking at sensory stuff, get them to, that they can look at. But if they like to touch stuff, but if this is soft and fluffy, that will be something like you could get them to wear in the day. But if they can do that, go like that, and stuff. Just buy stuff that could really help them. And it would help if this stuff they need to chuck in the car, have a sensory back for the car. So if something like that happens in the car, you have stuff. In the UK, there's a lanyard. I'm going to look for mine. You can, sorry, Alice. You can get a lanyard that you wear in airports, shops, anywhere in the UK to show you've got a hidden disability. Let me just find mine. Mm. I'm just not sure where it is. Sorry. This, mm. I know I got one of that, so just give me a minute. Because the lanyard just tells people, without you having to say anything, that I've got a disability. In this time, it can say, I'm not going to wear a mask because I don't like it, and i got a disability, and it helps. Um, still looking for the lanyard, so about this. Um, the lanyard is in a really messy room. It's a messy room because it's our laundry room. And our room full of stuff that goes to my sister in a week or so. So this is the lanyard. 
I don't need it when I go out, but when I'm going on holiday, then it really does help, amazingly. It just helps. So I will get one. I need a towel back because I just went upstairs. I'm going upstairs, it's tiring. So yeah, so I'm gonna film the wrap in a moment. Then that's it all I'm gonna do in this video. I am go. I am going to film my rabbit for the end of this vlog. Then at the end of this episode, I am going to film. This is the rabbit named Jeffrey. Jeffers, gonna have a stroke, Jeffers. It's up. There's a might be stroked when the rabbit wants to be stroked, but otherwise doesn't want to be stroked. Thanks for watching this autism special. Bye, fam!